I'd like to show you how to take a continuous line design and make a block out of it just on your Pro Stitcher without having to take it to your computer and do any editing. So if you'll look at the screen, you'll see on my flower that it has a lead in from here and goes in and creates the flower. And then it goes out so then I could create, you know, do a continuous line and repeat this across and it would just tie into the next flower. But I don't want that lead in and I don't want that lead out. So looking at this fabric here, this quilt, you can see where it starts in here, does the flower, and then it leads out. But I want to actually get rid of that and that. So we have just a flower. So the first thing we want to do is position it, resize it, do the things that you need to so that it fits within your area. And then we're going to quilt this. So I want to reposition this and I will, I'm going to reposition it from that corner. Looking at my screen, I want to grab that corner and then I want to place that corner right here. Move pattern. And now as I look at that, I can see where this is going to stitch on my fabric. And it's a large flower and that's okay because that's what I want it to be for that area. Now I'm ready to stitch this out, but I need to get rid of that part of the line. So I'm done. I'm going to run quilt and I want to find a new start point. So as I go into this button here, new start point, when I, if I start moving my plus, I, there's a little white dot and that's where my start point is. I, it would start moving along the fabric. But if I go in here and push follow and then zoom in on this and move my machine over so that it's close to that area on that line, then it auto find that. Do you see that little white dot? If I move that along the line, see it drop down to the bottom one, I want it on that line right there, there. Now I want it further in so I can push this plus and it will scroll through and you can see the number change of the segments, put it right there. It's at 74 on my current line. So if I want to do this in every block, I can go and reposition this in each block and type in 74 there and it will do this every time for me. So I like that. I want to start here, press that button. The machine will move into position. and I'm ready to resume. Now, the important thing is I need to not walk away from my machine because as it stitches out and moves over to this lead out, I need to be able to stop the machine before it stitches off. So we're gonna go ahead and resume. And I'm gonna do a needle down and up and bring up my bobbin thread. And then I've got uh, the current stitch or uh, point checked the current tie off checked. It's going to do the tie offs. I want to zoom out on my screen so I can see exactly where I'm going on the screen. And I've got this at a slower speed because I want to be in control of my machine. So it's going to go ahead and stitch this. We'll stitch the top three and then go to the bottom after doing the center. So as it gets closer and stitches this out, it will come and do the lead out. I, once it starts doing that lead out, I want to hit my stop, cancel emergency only, because what that does is it stops the machine immediately, it disables the motors and it just stops. So then I have control of everything. It's halfway done now. It will stitch these last two petals and then stitch over the top. So sometimes it's good to know your stitching path. You might want to check that out before 
so you know when it's going to come to that lead out. Stitch down and now it's going to stitch across the top and stop. And I could have stopped that sooner but it actually worked fine. It disabled my motors and now I have just a block design with a continuous line design. I want to show you what to do if your thread breaks. So first of all, we're gonna stitch a flower and we'll stitch this same flower that we have here. We'll go ahead and do a new start point and I'm gonna type in 74 because that's where I want it to start. So if we zoom in on this, we'll be able to see that white dot. That's where my thread's, where it's gonna start stitching. I could actually even go one further. That's really nice there. And we're ready to start. So it'll move to that point. I'm ready to resume. I'm going to simulate a thread break by clipping my thread so that we can go back and catch that start point that we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching, but I want to bring up my bobbin thread. It's going to do my tie off. We'll go ahead and clip our thread so they're out of the way. Make my flower. We'll let it stitch a, a petal. Okay, we'll let it go a little bit. Then I'm going to pause. If we'd have walked out of the room while we were doing an edge to edge and we came back on the HQ16 and on the Avante, the machine would have kept going. On our Fusion, the machine would have stopped if we had the uh, thread check indicator checked, but uh, with our Avante and our 16, we need to stop the machine and move it back. So then I need to find that spot. So the first thing I would do is fix my thread. So that's what we need to do is either find out what the problem was, why my thread broke, if I run out of bobbin thread, whatever the issue was. Let's trim my thread point here. And then I need to go back here and whether I want to do a, a tie off on that, these are the things I need to decide. So the first thing I want to do is go new start point and disable my motors and move my machine back. And I like to move it back so that it's back a little bit, a few stitches back and rather than do a tie off, I will let it actually stitch over the top and those threads lock together so that we don't have that tie off. And I want to do an auto find. I can zoom out on my screen and my white dot, if you look at the, dot, the screen, my white dot is right here. That's where I stopped stitching, but as I move my crosshairs over here, my needle, that's where I want to go to. So if I push follow, we can zoom in on that. That's where I want to be. If I put my crosshair and my needle right there, right where I want that to be, and say auto find, it moved my white dot over there. And you can see if I move that, that white dot moves along and follows me. And I like what I've done. Now I can go ahead and press start here. It'll move to that point. Resume. If I need to bring up my bobbin thread, then I could do a needle down and up and bring that bobbin thread up. If I didn't want to, I could just leave it and go ahead and stitch. And then I'm ready to start. I, I don't want my tie off on the current. This is the current design that I'm doing, so I uncheck that. I'm ready to resume. And it will stitch right over the top of where I was. And I'm gonna stitch, clip that. 
And there we go. Ready to quilt, it's going. Didn't even miss. So we'll do this again where we can hit our, uh, our emergency stop so that we don't get our uh, lead out. And I'll see if I can hit a little sooner. And I might even hit it so it doesn't do that retrace over the top. It's disabled my motors, and now if I want to do my own tie-off, I could have done a half stitch, or if I just want to clip my threads, then I can go ahead, bring up my bobbin thread, and I'm finished. And you can see the difference between the two flowers where I didn't do the retrace, and on this flower it has the retrace and leading out. I'd like to show you how to use the back up and forward on your machine in using in an application of eliminating quilting going over an applique because there's sometimes that you want to use edge to edge quilting but there might be some element in your in your quilt such as an applique or an embroidery that you don't want to quilt over the top of so I've I've placed a applique on the quilt and we are going to just do a stipple on this applique or around this and eliminate the flower. So we will go to run and go ahead and start quilting. And what, we'll, what I want to do is I actually want this to be in a slow speed because when I want it to stop, I want to be stitching slow so I'm in control. So I'm going to, in my settings, I'm going to stitch the, or put this at about 25% and my stitches per inch are 10. I will do a tie off at the beginning and the end and my pull up. And we want to start stitching. So this will move over. My start point is down here. Bring up my bobbin thread and go ahead and resume. Okay, now the one thing that I want to do is make sure I know where my flower is in when the design stitch is out. So I want to do a follow. So I press follow and then I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit and I'm going to follow this path and see exactly where as I get to my flower I need to pause so that it, and I might not even pause on that because it just barely skims that and I'll just let it do that but as it comes up here this will be okay as it stitches out comes over here but as it comes down to this area right here that's when I know I need to push my first pause because I don't want it to stitch into the flower so I'll push as it comes into that I'll press pause and then from there I know that I need to do some more but we'll get to that point because I know that that's my first pause is about right in there. So ready to quilt. Start quilting. I want my tie off and my pull up. My t we'll move that over. It's going to take my pull up, bring my bobbin thread up, and resume. After it starts stitching, I'll clip my thread or else just pull it off to the side. And I have the speed at 25%, so I'm in control of this. And I know if I'm not where an applique is, I could move my speed up, but right now I know that I need to be in control. And I'm watching my screen to see that that's where I'm going to be stopping, about right where that green line, that point is. And to stop, I'll push the pause. So I'm going to be ready for that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and push pause. Now I haven't come right up to it, but I have a back up and a forward, so I'm going to press back up and I'm going to do a manual, just press this and let it stitch a few more. And it'll just take it right till I get to that point. And now I'm going to uncheck the stitch and just let it flow through it. Now it's going to pull the thread and if it's too tight then we may want to uh, release that a little bit. But it's not going to go so much that it's going to be a problem on this. So it's not going to stitch but it's just going to go forward. We just watch that go through there. And now I can stop there and I can check it and let it stitch. It'll come around and as it gets closer again I'll stop that and we'll just let that maybe take one more stitch. Okay, unstitch or uncheck the stitch and let it go forward past this. Okay, now we're ready to check it again. And if I want to, I could increase my speed. So we're going to go forward. But we're going to leave the speed slow enough so that I am in control of this. I can clip those threads that, uh, and tie them, you know, bury them later. It's going to eliminate that and here we go as it's going to come around and I'll want to stop again. Then uncheck my stitching and go forward through it. This is a little tedious but I would rather do this than have to unpick something that went through a, an embroidery or an applique that I don't want. So we're going to just let that go through. And it'll follow through there. And this is the way we're going to just stitch this through. This is called air stitching. Just let that flow through there. I might want to release my thread just a little bit so that it doesn't pull or break. 